I declare this congregation open to install the new Chancellor of the University of Salford. Please be seated. Distinguished guests, please welcome the Vice-Chancellor, Professor Helen Marshall. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's a, a real pleasure to see you all here today on what is an incredibly special day for the university. Um, it's my pleasure to welcome you all here for this very special occasion. The, the installation of our new Chancellor is a moment of huge significance for our institution, but also for our wider community. The University Chancellor is very much our public face. They perform a ceremonial position during graduation and act as a figurehead for the university. They support the important work that the university does and are a vital advocate for our mission, vision and values. But when you take on the role, you don't get much by way of a job description, I'm afraid. I mean, if you go back to our university charter, which began in 1967, it formally makes provision for a chancellor, noting simply this. This is all they've got to do in the written note. There shall be a chancellor of the university who shall be entitled to confer degrees and other academic awards of the university. I'm not sure that would make it past our HR team right now because we're hoping Lucy can do a bit more than that for us. But being a university chancellor isn't like any other job. It's an honor and privilege bestowed only on the most worthy. And we really trust our chancellors to make the role that which they wish. Every chancellor is different. Every chancellor is a different person, has a different personality, has a different skill set, different things to offer the university. And what we want is our Chancellor to give us what they can give us. And Lucy's really up for it, really up for it. So since receiving our Royal Charter in 1967, we've had six distinguished individuals to serve as our Chancellor. And each has brought something a bit different. And they've both, they've all been quite um, distinctive in the way they've done the job. We've had royalty twice. A world-leading world geneticist, a distinguished academic, both of whom were knights of the realm, an internationally renowned human rights lawyer, and a national poet of Scotland. So quite an interesting mix. Now our first and longest serving chancellor was His Royal Highness Prince Philip. And he was our chancellor for 24 years, which is a heck of a long time. And our fantastic university archives are home to some illuminating records that give us an insight to how he played the role of Chancellor. And I, I did meet him once um, when we celebrated our, I think it was our 60th birthday. Um, I took a painting down, he, he, he wasn't able to come up and I went down to Buckingham Palace and had a chat to him, which let me just say was incredibly interesting. Um, I had to bite my lip a few times. Um, but our fantastic university archives are home to some illuminating records that give us an insight into how he played the role of Chancellor. And during his first speech as Chancellor, he said, Chancellors are, of course, purely titular heads of universities, more decorative than useful. But I can tell you this, I shall be watching the progress of Salford University with great interest and sympathy, and I shall be as proud of its successes as any of you. But I shall also feel sadder and more disappointed if it doesn't live up to my expectations. And he did more than just watch. Correspondence in our archive shows that His Royal Highness was regularly in discussion with the then Vice Chancellor, sending letters and making phone calls, wanting to know why certain things had not been done. So clearly, very, very bought into the university and making sure it made progress. But Prince Philip's hard work and commitment was something he was very much known for in terms of his public roles. And I have no doubt that this institution benefited 
from that experience in dedicating guidance during the early years of its existence. Now, our most recent, uh, our most recent chancellor was Jackie Kay, um, and she was very, very different to someone like Prince Philip. She was great fun, and she brought her own inimitable style to the role when she was installed in 2014. Her charisma, her wit, creativity, brought a new level of fun to graduation and other university proceedings that can often be a little formal and intimidating. And she was certainly able to bring a bit of pizzazz to those events more than I could because I'm just a boring corporate lawyer. And Jackie was the sort of chancellor that just came to graduation ceremonies twice a year. She was, she was not like this. She didn't come to graduation and then disappear. She came and she did lots of things with our students. She was a poet and she worked really well with our students in the creative industry sector. And <laughs> we, we would give her a speech for graduation and she'd, she'd follow the first two lines and then it would go off left field completely. And it was, she was just so hilarious, great fun. And as a writer in residence during her time, she also created work on topics that varied, uh, such as Engel's beard, uh, the, the, the statue we've got out there, COVID, our 50th anniversary. She did some fantastic stuff. And Jackie's warmth was known to everyone who came across her, whether that was an individual student who she greeted across the graduation stage or staff in the institution who she worked very closely with. Not just senior staff, but staff right across the board. And she was, she was a great fun. Now, I've used these two examples of our first and most recent chancellor as they exemplify the golden thread that has run through all of the Salford University chancellors. And in fact, they embed, embody the values of this university. And that's about hands-on, not handshaking. It's about getting involved and getting bedded in to the university and understanding what it is we're trying to achieve for our local community, the wider GM community, the UK and the planet. I mean, if you look at what we're doing at the moment around zero carbon, and you look at Energy House and you look at the Z House and you look at some of the other things, you can see that we are working really hard, not just for Salford, but for the wider community. And we're doing a good job. And I know that Lucy will continue this tradition in her own special way. Let me tell you, Lucy, no one, no one, is born to be a chancellor of a university and no two chancellors are alike. And what we want is for you to craft and shape the role that plays to your strengths and, I can tell you now, a great sense of humour. And it will be fantastic to have you and the contribution you're going to make, I know already from having met you and we've been out for dinner just to have a more relaxed conversation, which was great fun. And Lucy is going to be fantastic. And we're really proud of the university and we're really proud today to be installing you as Chancellor. So today is a celebration for me, a celebration of our new Chancellor and also a celebration of our past, present and future as a university. And in welcoming Lucy as head of the institution, we know our future will only get brighter and bolder and better as we go down the road. So I'm delighted to be here today to install Lucy Meacock as our seventh chancellor. We'll hear shortly from the chair of our university council, Lord Keith Bradley, on what makes Lucy a perfect fit for this role. So for now, I'll shut up. Um, this is what I'm normally told at work. Um, and our final me message to our students on graduation day is be proud of what you've achieved. Be bold in your aspirations. The future is yours to make and take. And Lucy, the future of yours and the universities is in your hands. And we're really proud to have you as Chancellor of the University. So I want to just say thank you very much for committing to the role. And we're absolutely delighted to have you. And we're looking forward to graduation in a few weeks' time. So thank you very much. It's now my pleasure to invite and to welcome Salford City Mayor Paul Dennett to say a few words. Paul. 
Helen, you'll be pleased to know I am sticking to the script, so I won't be ad-libbing on this occasion. Um, good afternoon, everyone. It's a privilege to be here today and to be part of such a special occasion in the University of Salford's history. And history is a really important word today. These sorts of events do lend themselves to looking backwards in time, which is not actually a bad thing. Helen has given us, in many respects, a whistle-stop tour of this proud institution's illustrious heritage. But I'd like to take a few minutes and moments of your time to look to the future, because that's what we do in Salford. We face to the future, but we never forget our past. We are proud of our industrial heritage as a city. Friedrich Engels famously spent time here when writing his seminal work, The Conditions of the Working Class in England. Back then, in the middle of the 19th century, Salford was a dirty industrial town at the beating heart of the Industrial Revolution. But today, Salford is a modern, vibrant city, a leading digital and tech cluster home to growing industries across media, the creative sector, and technology sectors. Once a derelict Dockland, a relic of a supposedly lost industrial global age, Media City UK is now Europe's second largest digital and creative cluster. National and international firms as varied as Kellogg's, Booper, TalkTalk, Talk, have chosen to make Salford their home locating their national headquarters in recent years here in our city. In 2020, we were named as the greenest place to live, dirty old town no more. And we've also got a soul. We are home to an innovation, independent cultural sector that boasts studios, galleries, music, theatres, and great sport teams, and a brand new festival called We Invented the Weekend. And the name of that speaks to our proud industrial history and also the absolute importance of the labour movement in our city. But we're not stopping there. We have big plans to create 40,000 jobs and deliver 40,000 homes by 2040 in the city of Salford, with Media City UK set to double in size over the next 10 years. And the university is vital to all these aspirations and ambitions. As a university that was forged in the heat of the Industrial Revolution of the 19th century, it is now trailblazing a path in preparing students in life for the fourth Industrial Revolution. The university and the city council and myself as city mayor share the same ambitions for this great place. We want to see an inclusive economy in our city, the creation of good jobs that local people can access, and an environment that we can be proud of and that is protected for generations to come. That's why we are committed to a long-term partnership between the university and the city to transform the Crescent area of Salford where we are today. Our £2 billion master plan will see new homes built, a new cultural quarter, green and clean transport infrastructure, and a new innovation zone, all in one new exciting district we call Crescent. But beyond the bricks and mortar, we're working with the university to develop new pathways for young people and older learners to benefit from higher levels of education and skills training. Through the Real Living Wage Action Group and the Inclusive Economy Steering Group, we're raising the quality of employment and living standards here in our city. The Salford Culture and Place Partnership is transforming the way that we promote arts and culture here in our city, creating a real destination here in Salford, being proud of landing the RHS's fifth National Garden, but taking that asset 
out into our communities. And in the Salford Innovation Triangle, we also have an innovation district like no other, connecting the university with Media City and our outstanding hospital, working with partners in academia, industry, health, and the public sector to transform public sector delivery and create good quality jobs within our city and city region. The university ultimately is at the heart of all these collaborations and partnership. It's the type of university that Salford is. This is not an ivory tower institution where academics are hidden away in spires or turrets, although we do have beautiful buildings. It's a real world university, grounded in reality, lived experience, and importantly, grounded in our great city. And while I must confess, Helen, I did study over the other side of the River Irwell at Manchester's universities. When I look around the council chamber of the city council, so many of our elected representatives are alumni here at this great institution. I know, I know at least of 10 of those, so great achievement for us. We have councillors that are also staff members here at the university and councillors that also sit on the university council. One of our Salford MPs studied here, so did others within Greater Manchester and more across the green benches of the House of Commons. Across the many businesses, large and small, that are located here in Salford, you don't have to look too far to find Salford graduates. Down at Media City, the BBC ITV employ vast numbers of homegrown talent for those just starting out, as well as many of those well-known stars that we all love and cherish. And if you go into Salford Royal, you'll be hard pushed to find a nurse or a midwife that hasn't trained here at this institution. You are part of the fabric, past and present, of this great city. And that's why I'm incredibly grateful that you've invited me here today. It's testament to your commitment to be truly a civic university. This isn't just the University of Salford. It is the University for Salford. And I know in Lucy, you've chosen an absolutely fantastic Chancellor, that won't just be for the university, but also for the city, the city region, and the north. An advocate for the values and ideals that she has been true to throughout her career, and that we as the community of Salford wholeheartedly share. So throughout my time as city mayor, being able to work with the University of Salford has been a great privilege. It's not always been easy, but I know that a commitment to improving the lives of the people of Salford and Greater Manchester is written through this institution like a stick of rock. Inclusive growth, access to opportunity, innovation with impact, together we can achieve so much more, delivering on that true spirit of Salford. So today it's about congratulating Lucy I really look forward to supporting your chancellorship and getting to work in the interests of the people of Salford, Greater Manchester and the North. Thank you very much. We will now commence the installation of the new chancellor. But before we do, we'll begin with a short video. And I have to say, when we were writing the scripts, I did have to say this. I really want to be able to say, run VT. When I heard Lucy was going to be the new chancellor, I was really excited. She has a tremendous reputation in the Northwest. I think Lucy's going to be great for the university. I think the students are going to love her. Lucy joining us is going to be very productive 
but I also think it's going to be great fun. She has long been a champion of the needs of this community. I think she'll be amazing and she's very passionate. When I heard that Lucy was going to be the new Chancellor, I was over the moon. Amazing. So I'm looking forward to it. She's got energy, she's got enthusiasm. She understands people, she understands the region and we're absolutely delighted we've landed her. Lucy Meacock is a wonderful journalist and presenter who has achieved recognition by BAFTA and the Television Society for her journalism. She is very wedded to the area of Salford and understands the ups and the downs that Salford has. I mean, we have a lot of positive opportunity in Salford, but we have a lot of deprived areas still. And kids from those deprived areas need to get the, the higher level skills and go into the jobs. So we have an innovation district on the northern edge of the campus and we're trying to attract a lot of businesses in so our students get jobs there. And Lucy was very wedded to the whole of the strategy that we had. She's also engaged with the students of Salford in the past and is a huge supporter of our media courses as well as the agenda we want to set to enable all students from whatever background to have the opportunity to progress to this university. She's great fun. And I think when she comes to do graduations for students, the students will absolutely love the entertaining talks that she will do at the graduation ceremonies. So lo lots of different things. On a personal level, I come from a creative arts background, and so it's great to see a role model working in that capacity to change so many lives. And then on a professional nature, I think because of the value she brings to the students and also the fact that she's already becoming so involved in the life of the university, it just creates an all-round buzz and excitement and will increase the profile of the university and therefore um, the understanding of successes that our students might go on to have. Uh, when I heard that Lucy was going to be the new Chancellor, I was really delighted because I believe as a journalist, she knows a lot about the challenges that student faces and um, she would be able to um, advocate and fight for student rights. And uh, apart from that, I think the students are going to love her. At the University of Suffolk, you have a culture where everyone can be unstoppable and the facilities in the university are second to none. Lucy has shown passion for your young people. Um, she's an alumni of the university and I'm sure, of course, uh, most of, a role model for most of our students. And, I'm confident she'll be an excellent advocate for the university. Open Eye and the University of Salford have been working together for six years and that's across the world, it's with the students, it's developing socially engaged and meaningful creatives for the next generation. When I heard that Lucy was going to be the new Chancellor, I was so delighted. She reflects the ambitions of the university, but also all of us that work so closely from the industry with the university to develop the next generation of students. The relationship with the University of Salford and Mawson um, really spans over many years. I myself went to Salford College, it's now part of the university, and we've developed a relationship in terms of progressing and looking at, in first instance, taking on board graduates, looking to help them on their career path. Uh, in fact, many have come and joined Mawson and worked for Mawson in a variety of areas of the different sectors we cover. It's a, a relationship we're very proud of and it's very important to us and it creates the fruits of bloodline of the engineering, which is the business we're heavily involved in. I'm delighted that Lucy is the new Chancellor. Apart from being a famous face in the public domain, um, it's her passion that comes across always and um, her commitment to the North West and I think she'll do an excellent job. We have an amazing relationship with the University of Salford here at Talk Talk. We're working on some exciting projects together, including the Institute of Technology, which is the government programme to really spearhead the delivery of technical education um, in STEM subjects, but also around sustainability, something really core to us as a business. We are really excited that Lucy's going to be the new Chancellor at the University of Salford. She's really passionate about Salford, Greater Manchester and the North West. We couldn't be more thrilled to have such a great advocate in place.
My link with the University of Salford is a very positive one. I studied there for five years. I studied a first degree course in housing and then subsequently a management course. And I'm absolutely delighted with what skill, knowledge and the confidence that I got. And to get a university qualification for somebody with my background was so important at the time. It helped me in my professional career in housing, but more than that, it helped me in my political career. And I'm so, so grateful that the University of Salford gave me the opportunity to study there. I'm absolutely delighted that Lucy is going to be the Chancellor of the University of Salford. I know her very well, she interviewed me a few times. Uh, she's a local person to Salford, but with an international reputation. And I think she will be genuinely a great ambassador for the University of Salford, and actually for this reason. So I'm delighted that she's agreed to be the new Chancellor. I was so surprised when the university approached me. It was just the biggest honour, and I can't really begin to tell you how excited I am about the prospect of being Chancellor of the University of Salford. It is, I think, definitely one of the proudest moments of my career, and I still can't quite believe it's happening, but it's just absolutely brilliant. I think one of the challenges as Chancellor is to make sure that people know what a fantastic part of the world this is. I know it because I've worked here for a long time and I'm really proud of the northwest of England. I go away and I tell everybody where I'm from and bang the drum for this part of the world. And I really want everyone else to do that as well. Everyone who's associated with the university I want them to go and spread the word. I want graduates, I want students, and I want staff to go away and say to other people, this is where you want to be. And when people graduate, I really want them to come back here one day and use their knowledge and the expertise that they've learned here to make this an even better part of the world. That's my aim, that's my challenge, and I'm really looking forward to to that challenge and making sure that happens. I've always had a great relationship with Salford University. I think primarily because I work at Media City, I've worked here for a long time, and there's a real buzz about the place. Whenever the students are graduating, it's full of smiles and there's a great atmosphere. You see them with their families and friends. Everyone around this place is smiling and having a great time and I feel I can offer a lot. So I'm really looking forward to it. I know they do a great job at the university and I just want to help in any way that I can. I now invite Lucy Meacock to stand and to be presented for installation as the seventh Chancellor of the University of Salford. Please welcome the Pro-Chancellor and Chair of Council, the Right Honourable Lord Keith Bradley. <laughs> Distinguished guests, students, staff, supporters and friends, good afternoon to you all. I'm delighted to have the honour today of presenting Lucy Meacock for installation as our new Chancellor here at the University of Salford. We've seen a snippet in the video of what Lucy is all about and why we're so excited to have her here as head of the institution. But if you'll allow me a little indulgent, uh, indulgence, I'd like to take just a few minutes to expand on this. Lucy is a familiar face in the living rooms of millions of people who live across the Northwest. She has presented ITV's Grenada reports for over 30 years. Spanning those five decades, we have seen huge social, political, and economic change in our region. 
And even in that ever-changing world, she has been a constant, positive, and reassuring presence. She is an award-winning journalist and broadcaster, not just someone who tells us the news, but a champion for the human stories that matter most to our region and to our communities. The accolades she has won throughout her career are for covering such as issues as the Hillsborough disaster, the Manchester bomb, the Morecambe cockle pickers tragedy, and the organ retention scandal. Lucy is not afraid of difficult issues. Lucy absolutely embodies the values that we seek to instill in our students at Salford. Industry, initiative, and integrity. First industry, Lucy is incredibly hardworking. Over 30 years at the top of broadcasting, Lucy isn't putting her feet up now. She is on our screens most days of the week. Outside of her work with ITV, she is a mentor for broadcasters, actors, and public speakers. She is already an honorary doctorate of this university and has been an inspiration to our students and alumni, working with us to support new and emerging talent. Our ethos as a university is collaboration with industry to provide our students with the skills they need in their future careers. So in Lucy, we know we have someone who can absolutely do that. Second initiative. I recall Lucy telling a story a few years ago when she received her honorary degree about how a former boss had told her, you won't want to be on television when you're 40 what woman in her right mind would want to be on TV in her 40s? She said that the next day she came into the office even more determined to hold on to the job that she loves. Lucy is still working for ITV, but that boss isn't. She doesn't need anyone to tell her what to think and what to do and she doesn't let anyone stand in the way of her dreams and her ambitions. And it's that confidence that I know Lucy can help instill in our students. Thirdly, integrity. I've already touched on some of the stories that Lucy has covered during her career. They are simply too many to recite. But I know that Lucy feels a great responsibility to tell the stories that aren't always easy but always matter. She's not afraid to use the platform to campaign and fight to make the lives of people living in our region better. And she also knows that it's incredibly important to sell stories that make the people of the Northwest smile. Because this region is dear to Lucy, as it is dear to all of us. Many of our students are from here. They go on to work here. Our roots in Salford are deep. This is our community. Our founding institution, as we've heard, was the Royal Technical Institute of Salford that opened in 1896 to provide the skilled workforce to power the Industrial Re Revolution. Over 125 years later, our mission hasn't changed. Like Helen, I've been looking at the records in the university archive. I read the speech of the then Vice-Chancellor, Clifford Whitworth, delivered at the installation of Prince Philip in 1967. He talked about the characteristics of the University of Salford. These included high standard of academic knowledge, research that is carried out in cooperation with industry, collaboration with industry on curriculum and staff that have industry expertise, cooperation with universities, including the University of Manchester, to provide students with a chance to obtain knowledge and experience in areas beyond technology, allowing students to explore subjects that they enjoy and are passionate about, and to encourage students to be responsible citizens, and to ensure finally that the university is open to all, irrespective of class, race, and religion for staff and students. 
You don't have to know the university inside out to know that the university envisaged by our first Vice-Chancellor strongly resembles the one led by our current Vice-Chancellor. It is an institution that I am incredibly proud to be involved with, and I am absolutely delighted that Lucy has agreed to join us and take on the role of Chancellor here at Salford. It's not always an easy role, as we've heard. It's more than just pomp and ceremony, as Helen has said. The Chancellor must embody the spirit, ethos, and values of the university. They are our most senior representative, the head of the institution. They should be our boldest advocate and our most critical friend. It takes a certain type of person to take on this challenge. But I know that in Lucy, we have someone who can do all of this and so much more. So welcome to Salford, Lucy, and thank you all for your attendance today. Vice-Chancellor, I present Lucy Meacock. Lucy Meacock, it was with profound satisfaction that members of the University of Salford learned that you were willing to become our seventh Chancellor. Further, that there are no known encumbrances to you holding this most distinguished position. It is therefore my duty respectfully to invite you to make a declaration that so far as lies within your power, you will maintain and uphold the privileges and rights of the university, faithfully and diligently execute the role of Chancellor. I, Lucy Meacock, hereby declare that I will duly fulfill the office of the Chancellor of the University of Salford and that I will faithfully endeavour to maintain and uphold the privileges and rights of the university. Thank you. I shall now install you, the robes will be changed. I shall now install you as, in your chair as Chair of Office, <laughs> as Chancellor of the University of Salford, may the university flourish and prosper under your guidance and direction. Distinguished guests and members of the university, I invite you to join me in acclaiming our new Chancellor, Lucy Meacock. Thank you. I'd now like to invite Lucy to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you. No pressure. I'm not surprised that uh, we had trouble getting the hat on. My head is feeling very big after uh, all of those wonderful things. Thank you so much for all of those lovely things that you said. For, uh, to start off with, I was thinking, who the heck are they talking about? Um, Gosh, I'm well out of my comfort zone today, I have to say. Um, but hello, everyone. Uh, what an absolute honor this is to stand here before you as the new Chancellor of the University of Salford. I think it has quite a nice sound to it. 
Anyway, it's a huge honor, of course, because what greater role is there than to help inspire a whole new generation to fulfill their maximum potential? It's great to see so many familiar faces here, especially the staff and supporters of the university uh, who I know helped to make Salford University what it is today. You're doing a great job. It's also uh, good to see uh, the hardworking, talented team from ITV and Grenada Reports, people who I know also hold Salford very close to their hearts. ITV and Salford have always had a really long and good relationship. Coronation Street, of course, just down the road, uh, but it goes much further than that. Uh, we've made so many programs and will continue to do so in the north, and we love that connection. Uh, also, from my point of view, it's lovely to see my, my friends, my good friends, and my family here today. Uh, so many thanks to you for being here. I really appreciate that. Now, my family today includes my sister, Anna, who might smile to remember my dad, who was a scientist, that was his background. And he used to say that this TV lark of mine was all well and good, but I would have to get a proper job sometime. And finally, I think he would consider this a proper job. <laughs> I should point out to my bosses at ITV that I've always thought television is a proper job, but he just didn't get it. Now, I was attracted to this new role by the complete dedication of the leadership team here, in particular the vice chancellor who uh, works her socks off basically to make sure that everything goes like clockwork and everything happens as it should, including today. So Helen, thank you so much for your support. But it's more than that. I really like the close links that the university is building and has always built with key local businesses, as we saw in that film, to make sure that it creates as many opportunities for as wide a range of students as possible. I am a great believer that whatever your background, we all deserve to be given the best opportunities in life. In fact, I was really pleased to hear just before we came in that, you, that the University of Salford actually has more care leavers coming in to do uh, degrees here than anywhere else. And I think that is a statistic to really be proud of because everybody needs an opportunity and it's fantastic to see those opportunities given to people who perhaps otherwise would not consider a university education. Salford has made huge strides to make sure that their qualifications lead to satisfying lasting employment. Going forward, of course, as Paul said, these are the skilled workers critical to the future economic success, not only of Salford, but of Greater Manchester and of the Northwest. And anyone who knows me knows how much I care about this part of the world. And of course, on top of that, we want our international students and students who move away to go and tell everyone else what a great part of the world this is. Now, I know that I've been very lucky in my career. Some of you will be very surprised, at, I'm sure, at how lucky I've been. But I want to make sure that others have some of the opportunities that I had in whatever field they choose. The opportunity to work near where you came from. You don't have to chase that dream to London, you can act, I mean, I did work in London, but I chose to come back to the northwest of England, and I want other people to be able to do that. So, as we heard before, of course, let's face it, this is a place with its roots in the Industrial Revolution. We've always been there, at the cutting edge of technology and at the forefront of progress. It's in our heritage, but more than that, it's in our genes. People here are no strangers to creativity and hard work. They just need the breaks. And this is one of the most exciting chapters in Salford's history. In the next few years, this whole area is going to be completely transformed, not just the campus, but also, as Paul was saying, surrounding districts to ensure that we live up to what's expected from an area with such a rich and cultural past. 
The university already has an impressive new home for robotics in the north of England and a new science, engineering and environment building due to open in a matter of weeks. Now, it's more than 40 years since I started out as a journalist in newspapers. Incredible, I know, but it is. It is that long. And young people are astonished that somehow we managed to produce a newspaper with no computers, no internet, and even more shockingly, no mobile phones. I think that was a mobile phone I just hear there. How do we survive without them? So that's looking back 40 years, but imagine the differences looking ahead. Now these are differences that I probably won't see, but I know that Salford will be there, right at the front of those developments. In the past few weeks, for example, Salford has achieved its best ever results in its research. Eight subject areas were classed as world leading, and when it comes to the real impact of that research, Salford was ranked number two in the country, which is pretty good going. In fact, I think that deserves a round of applause. Don't worry, I won't go on for too long, I promise. But the courses here, of course, will provide the nurses to look after us when we need them, as Paul mentioned, and the wider medical teams. We might all be grateful for that at some point, some of us sooner than others. And of course, it'll be people like their cyber security experts from here who help us to keep safe in the workplace and beyond. That is all very important work and vital skills. Now, one of the proudest days of my life was when I was given an honorary degree here. A couple of friends of mine were there for that event as well. And now, best of all, I have lots of graduation days to look forward to. Such an important finale to university life, a day a student never forgets, and a day captured in that photograph, proudly displayed for years to come. So what a privilege it's going to be to be there to congratulate them on their hard work and their achievement. And I want to assure them that we will never forget them, that they will always be part of that great network of alumni, which already stretches to many corners of the world. And we can also reassure them that companies are going to want to employ people from Salford University. And I'll tell you why because Salford stands for the stars of the future who are ambitious, loyal, focused, optimistic, resilient, and determined to achieve more than anyone ever expected. Now, let's go and tell the world what Salford stands for. I think we're gonna make a great team, thank you. Distinguished guests, that concludes the installation of the new Chancellor. Before I invite the Chancellor to close the ceremony, I would like to, um, just a couple of announcements. Uh, please can I ask that guests remain seated until the uh, procession has had the chance to leave the, uh, uh, the, the hall. We would also like to extend an invitation to all of you here to another party this afternoon and into this evening to celebrate and bring to a close a two-year-long project called rediscovering Salford. This citywide collaboration between the University, Salford City Council, Salford Museum and Art Gallery and RHS Garden Bridgewater, supported by the Arts Council England, has explored the many parks, gardens and green spaces across our city. There are a host of activities taking place from 4 until 10 p.m. Uh, across our campus, Peel Park, and the museum and art gallery, including artists and tours, performances, dance music, and family activities. Everyone is welcome. I would now like to invite the Chancellor, Lucy Meacock, to close the ceremony.
distinguished guests and members of the university, today we have made history at the University of Salford and I am delighted to be the seventh chancellor. I think this is an occasion worthy of celebration, so I hope you can join me on the Crescent Lawn to do so. I declare this congregation closed. Thank you.